Welcome back to the Mega Meeple, the show all about gamers and the games that bring them together. I'm your host, Tom, and I want to thank you for hitting that download button. Now, if you like what you hear, please be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. And while you're there, leave us uh, some kind words and put out some of that five-star loving, okay? We'd really appreciate that. And I'll, I'll call, I will promise I'll call you in the morning. Uh, now, if you have any ideas or suggestions of what you want to hear about, or maybe a topic, a discussion about the board games, now you can contact us through our website. It's www.themegameeple.com. And go to our social media page. All the links to our pages like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. You know all the ones. Okay, it can be found there at our social media page. And now you can also hear the podcast on our YouTube channel. As well as some unboxing videos, as boring as they are. But evidently, the unboxing videos is a thing. So I, I do them. Um, oh, well. Uh, and you can also uh, see some reviews of games and gaming accessories. And the link to that is also on our social media page on the website. Welcome back to the Mega Meeple. This is episode 12. And I'm being kind of quiet because I'm recording this at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I don't want to disturb my roommates. So we're going to be real, real quiet. You're going to have to turn your volume up really, really loud. No, just kidding. Uh, but I am, <laughs> I am recording this at 3 o'clock in the morning. Because uh, I'm getting ready to move and I need to get the, some crap done here. So uh, this is going to be short and sweet. And then we have an interview the uh, second half of the episode. With a local company here that does escape rooms and exits, it's called Exit Strategy, and their company that has uh, numerous escape rooms or exit rooms that's set up that you could go and play. Uh, I've gone to uh, well, it's about three or four of them. Uh, they're pretty neat, and uh, thought they'd be a uh, neat people to uh, to interview to find out uh, since uh, Cosmos and a few other companies are coming out with these. Uh, escape rooms in a box and like a board game type thing let's see what uh finding out about uh the inner workings of doing uh, an actual live physical escape room well what's going on uh this past week uh well first martians uh, i guess the, the the backers and pre-orders for first martians starting to hit people's doorsteps and uh looking forward to that uh the app has already been released so i went ahead and uh, ordered first martians i uh, probably get it uh, sometime uh, next month but i uh, already have the app and just kind of messing around with the app and it's pretty uh pretty user friendly and in fact uh ronnie smith of watch it played uh, came out with a video and of uh, the rules of first martians and the one thing that everybody uh is just keep talking about not so much first martians is about how long Ronnie Smith's video is is like 50 minutes. Uh, that's that's longer than your typical. I mean, if you take a, your average hour-long TV show, take out all the uh, commercials, uh, you you basically have about 40, you have 48 or so minutes of actual program t- content. Well, the the watch it played <laughs> instructional video tutorial video is uh 50 minutes a little over 50 so people was talking about you know well yeah i got it's like that must be like the longest video he ever done and speaking of uh watch it played and ronnie smith uh, he is uh launching his uh fundraiser on indiegogo for seven uh, season seven of his show so and again we'll I'll, i'll put a link to that on the the promo video in the uh show notes of this episode so go and uh, support Ronnie and, and everything that he does because God knows uh, he's, he's bailed my butt out quite a few times with rules and learning a game. If he's come out with the rules of the game uh, tutorial, I will go see that. And that is like one of the, the go-to things, the number one thing that I would look at to determine whether or not I want to buy the game. Uh, speaking of games with apps, I uh, got a... For those of us who backed the reboot of Stop Thief, 
uh, we got an email update saying that the, the ship has docked. And the uh, shipment of all those games are in the process now going through customs. And shortly, hopefully soon, uh, going out to the warehouse and then out to the backers. So hopefully I will get uh, the copy of my Stop Thief uh, sometime, uh, yeah, mid to late August, I hope. And the app is uh, almost done. They're going to be submitting that to the Apple Store or App Store uh, this coming week. So hopefully I'll be able to uh, download the app and play around with that a little bit and get the feel for the uh, user, you know, the player interface, and how uh, user-friendly it is uh, before I actually get the game. All right, so that's it. Like I said, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Don't want to wake up my roommates. And uh, well, uh, I, feel like I'm, I feel like I'm on NPR or something. You know, it's like... <laughs> That's that soft, quiet voice. But anyway, let's get on to our interview this week. Welcome back to the Mega Meeple. Uh, as I uh, stated a little bit earlier in the episode, uh, Cosmos has come out with a series of games called Exit the Game. Uh, right now they have uh, three versions available. It has uh, The Secret Lab, Abandoned Cabin, and The Pharaoh's Tomb. So uh, basically, it, and, and these are uh, things that they've had at uh, Gen Con and the other conventions and stuff like that, where a group of people basically get locked into a room and they have a mystery or uh, something that they need to solve with puzzles and clues and, and whatnot. And they have to do that within a certain time frame. Well, uh, for those of you not sure what a exit room or a panic room or something like that is, is about, uh, we have Melen Labrie here. And she is uh, one of the co-owners of a local company here in the area called Exit Strategy. Melen, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming on to the show. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, thank you. Well, uh, first of all, let, let's, um, if, for those people out there that, that not maybe maybe heard about the, what it is, but not quite sure, uh, let, let's get it right from the source. Can you explain the concept of what an exit room is? Um, an exit room or an exit game is very simple. The best way to explain it is kind of like a scavenger hunt, but really more for adults or teenagers. So people are in a room for 60 minutes, and they have to find clues, solve puzzles to make it out of the room. Now, depending on the room, making it out might be by solving a murder, robbing a bank, or saving the world. Okay. Well, wow. All right. And have to do all that within 50 minutes? Within 60 minutes, correct. Oh, okay. Wow. 60 minutes. Uh, all right. Well, for um, now, I just want to point out to the people, uh, uh, check out if you have uh, something like this in your area, but uh, we're uh, interviewing uh, exit strategy today, so uh, my next few questions may not pertain to what the uh, gaming area in your local area would have. This is just for, our, uh, this, is for this particular uh, company. Now, for, for you, uh, for your exit strategy uh, company there, how many scenarios do you have? We currently have nine. We have two locations, so that makes us one of the largest escape rooms in the country. Uh, at our original location, which we call Exit South, we have six rooms currently. It's been open for almost three years now. And at our north location in the university area, we have currently three rooms with room number four set to open in about three weeks now. So uh, how often do you, do you cycle through or change out uh, through the different scenarios of the rooms you have? Um, that's probably one of the questions that we get asked the most often. And our rooms, especially the newer rooms, are very immersive. So that means that when, it, when looking at the investment, whether it be of time, money, and energy in building a new room, it's, it's quite extensive. So that's why we can't really switch out the rooms every month or, you know, or so. So the goal... And actually, the, the reason why we opened Exit North is because we still had so many ideas that we wanted to, to do 
Um, so rather than tearing down Lone Venice itself, we decided to open a second location. Uh, as soon as this is done, which should be, again, is sometime in July, probably in September, we'll go back to Exit South, tear down at least one room so that we can switch it out for 2017. Um, before the end of 2017 and 2018, probably I would say maybe about two or three more at the South location that are going to get not just a makeover, but a transformation. So the mm-hmm. goal is to keep each room maybe for about eight months-ish, depending on how popular the room is, of course. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that reminds me of something else. It's like, you know, as these groups are going through there, um, they're, they're having to open up boxes and doors and, and, and ropes and stuff like that and getting clues. On, on average, how long does it take for you guys to go in and then reset a room for the next group? It really depends. Now, our more traditional, if you will, rooms have a lot of locks and keys and things like that. So that usually takes a bit more time to reset um, because there's more items, if you will, to put back and to lock back. Our newer rooms involve a lot of technology. So that means that, for example, you might take a book, place it somewhere else, and the door opens. Mm. Um, so that sometimes requires just a bit less um, reset time, so I would say anywhere between um, just a couple minutes to eight, nine minutes. Okay. And, of course, depending on how much of a mess the group makes, because yeah. for us, obviously, anything goes pretty much as long as people are not breaking things. Um, right. So sometimes, you know, people are very tidy, especially when there's a mom in the room, and sometimes people make a real mess. So that obviously takes a bit longer. Now, you said you the, the the group has a time limit that they have to do uh uh, what's what's the fastest time that any group has ever finished one? Um, I think the best the the uh, best record really is for Lost in Space, and if I'm not mistaken, that's about 25 minutes. Now, for us, whenever there's a record, that implies that people who played that specific room had never played that one before. They might have played a room, but never that one. Otherwise, of course, it would not be fair. Right. So, and that was about 25 minutes with no hints, because for our rooms, we always give unlimited number of hints because we do know that our rooms are challenging. They're all beatable, but they're all very challenging. So that is probably the best time we've ever had. All right. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, I understand you, you guys give uh, uh, like a walkie-talkie to the group, and if, if, they, if they're ever stumped, they could just call in for help at any time? Correct. Now, there's always a way to communicate, whether it be a radio, a phone, intercom, or sometimes simply with a um, sound system. But, yes, for us, because for Jay and I, when we started this, our tagline was engaging, challenging, and fun. So we do want for people to be engaged. We want them to have fun, but we also want them to be challenged. So that's why I tried there's no limit. If the group wants 20 hints, we'll give them 20 hints. If they want none, we'll give them none. We really want people to stay engaged and have fun. So if people are stuck, they're more than welcome to ask for help. Yeah, what, what's the most uh, memorable thing you, you guys uh, seen in, in, a, in a group? In a room. But, but if I may, there's, um, for me, something, because I'm a mother, some, something that's always very special to me is to see groups. We do a lot of team building, so lots of colleagues come in and play, but also groups of friends and families. And for me, um, I love having families, you know, different generations. Sometimes it's the grandparents, the parents and the grandchildren, like, you know, teenagers, teenagers mm-hmm. kind of rolling their eyes, looking at the adults and like, oh, my God, this is going to be so lame. I don't want to be here. Mm-hmm. And watching the dynamics of the family change and everybody having a good time and people coming out and hugging and high-fiving, having had such a wonderful experience because the beauty of an escape room is that it puts everyone on equal footing. It's not about how smart you are. It's about your way of looking at things. And sometimes having people of different generations actually helps the group. So that, for me, has got to be one of the best things, just watching people have fun together. Sometimes it can be strangers who have been paired together and watching Strangers take pictures afterwards, and you know, you know they had a great time. And I think that in this world, we very often we don't communicate for one. It's other than you know, texting and email and, and that kind of thing. We take your phones away, and to sell the room, you have to work as a team. So mm. to watch strangers or to watch you know family members or colleagues forced to communicate and having a great time. And I don't care how old you are, there's still something magical about having something in front of you that you know you need to open, and then maybe, you know, you press a button or you find a combination, the joy, the, the fulfillment, you know, that hero moment of saying, you know, we, we did this, we figured it out, or we got it open, and now the magic of watching what is the next step, the next thing that we have to do. 
that's that's what drives us to continue to want to do more and keep you know providing people with that those experiences. That, that, that's neat. That's neat. Uh, especially when it was the younger generations, like, are you gonna take away my phone? It's like, yeah, during, during over the next hour, you're not gonna be able to text or uh, surf on the web or te- you know Snapchat or whatever. You know, it's it's, it's you know, everybody's surprisingly, everybody's in there together. But surprisingly, it's not teenagers. That oh, really? Get, that are, no, it's not. <laughs> that, that really, that's what I was expecting. Very often, <laughs> often it's older people, you know, people who, are, I, I guess, have become dependent on their phone. And maybe because younger people at school, they're not allowed to have their phone. Whereas as adults, we always have them on us, you uh-huh. know, whether it be at work or whatnot. So very often, it's like the 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds are like, what do you mean I can't have my phone? But I'm an oh, important wow. person. For sure, I, I get to keep my phone. No, you don't. So that you know, that was surprising to us. Oh, that that's wild. That's that's funny. And what and what was uh you you did have scenarios that uh, you mentioned uh, scenarios that have been uh, successfully solved and within the time frame. Uh, what 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 scenario was or do you remember what scenario or what uh, what you said uh, twenty five minutes. Yes, that was lost in space. Now, all the rec- well, we have a lot of records that are within the 40, 25 to 40 minute time frame. Um, and surprisingly, you know, very often those records are set by groups of strangers who happen to play together. Mm. Probably because, um, I think there are two reasons for that. Maybe when people are playing with strangers, they're, they're on their best behavior and they focus a bit more. But also because very often, you know, our friends or loved ones, we see things the same way. Uh, whereas if you throw in strangers in the mix, people kind of look at things in very different ways. So very often the best groups that we have are strangers working together. So oh. a lot of our records are about you know, 25, 30 to 40 minutes. We do have okay. a few rooms. Um, the records are probably about like 55 minutes. And some of them, uh, some of our rooms have never been beat without help. Oh, wow. Okay. They're, 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 they're back challenging. Yeah. They are that challenging. I think at the moment we have two of them that have never been beat uh, without without help by trainer and uh, final sacrifice. Well, one of the ones that you mentioned uh, was a lost in space one. Uh, with, with that giving it away, uh, obviously, can, can you give us like a, a brief brief synopsis of what uh, what they have to do in that room? In lost in space, you are a tourist going into space. And um, you hit an asteroid, so of course the space the spaceship is badly damaged, so you have to fix it so that you can be rescued. So that okay. one is a bit more hands on, so it, it's very popular for that reason for people who like something that is a bit more hands on, because okay. obviously you have to fix the spaceship. Well, thank you so uh, thank you so much, uh, Milan. Uh, is there? Uh Anything else? Uh, if, if people uh, in the local area in the Carolinas uh, want to uh, f- find you guys, where, where, where would they go? As a strategy, us.com, and we have both, loca- both locations lo- uh, listed on that website. So, as a strategy, us.com. Okay, great. And again, we'll put a link to that on the show notes for this episode. Thank you so much, Milan. That's uh, Milan Labrie of Exit Strategy. Thank you so much. You. Very welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for listening to The Mega Meeple. Again, please subscribe on iTunes and uh, leave us a rating and five stars and all that kind of stuff. And if you'd like to support the, the podcast with uh, hosting costs and stuff like that, you can go to our Patreon page and you know donate a dollar or so. You know, every bit helps. Now, if you have any ideas of topics to be discussed or things to include in the show, please follow and reach out to me at any of our social media sites. The links can be found on the social media page on our website, themegameeple.com. And also, if you're a game designer or creator and would like to get the word out about your game or Kickstarter, you can contact me via the Contact Us page. Thank you so much, and until next week, this is Tom saying, Game On. Thank you.